What's going on, everybody? My name is Elfrins. Welcome back to yet another reaction video. Today, I got another Poppy Playtime video for you guys, but this time it's from Game Theory. And I just posted recently, or at least what, by the time I'm recording this, which is the 12th of April, I've just put out another Poppy Playtime th Game Theory video that I hadn't seen already. Uh, but today, a few days ago, this video came out around the same time I was reacting to that Huggy Wuggy mob entertainment video and it looks like it has to do with the my headphones are not cooperating with me hold on my head <laughs> it seems to be connected to the kissy missy reaction video i had done recently so with that being said guys we're gonna be reacting to game theory we solved kissy missy poppy plate by game theory so with that being said guys we're gonna go ahead and react to this bad boy in three two one go <laughs> of course, Matt, Matt Pat's already up to his, to his usual gigs. He couldn't have gotten far. What was that? Stay alert. There. Stay calm. Don't worry. I'm not here to hurt you. How about a Diet Coke? You want one? Yeah? <laughs> Hello, Internet. <laughs> Welcome to okay. Game Theory, the show that only gives you one instruction. Have fun! Mash the subscribe button. Huh, mysterious red text that isn't the same as the rest? Totally not suspicious. Today, with the FNAF timeline finally behind me, we are overdue to cover something completely different. A game- By the way, I am going to get back to reacting to the rest of that those uh, Game Theory videos, so look out for those where we explore an abandoned children's entertainment venue filled with oversized characters that were at one point friendly, but then turned evil on account of being possessed by the souls of dead children. See, completely different. Yes, my friends, we're hopping back onto the no, Poppy not. Playtime train because while well, I've been busy over in my own personal animatronic hellscape, Mob Entertainment has been dropping all sorts of new content. The spin-off title Project Playtime, a complex multi-month long ARG, and my other favorite form of content, analog horror YouTube videos. Because you can't spell analog horror without the lore. Oh, I, I, I suppose you can. There's, there's, there's no E. Analog <laughs> horror. Well, guess what? It's a silent E anyway. Call it the phonetic spelling of lore. So far, Mob has released two quote-unquote lost VHS tapes to their YouTube channel. Both of which I have already reacted to, so go check out my reaction playlists for those. Channel. One from 1992 and the second from 1995. Look, the titles have the dates in there and everything. Oh, Even a wait. dot... They, oh, they do. I never, you know, I think I did read that, that and completely forgot about it. Hold on. <laughs> MP4 at the end for that truly authentic lost footage feel, despite the fact that the MP4 as a file format didn't exist until 2001. But who True. am I to judge? Anachronistic file formats aside, these things aren't just filled with a bunch of mindless spooks building hype for the eventual release of Chapter 3. They're also filled with clues to the lore. And I think, thanks to one of these, I've been able to solve the identity of a fan favorite character. Everyone's Kissy beloved Missy. jumbo pink plushie, Kissy Missy. Missy, who's hidden inside our floppy little friend? I think I have the answer for you. So grab really? your tranquilizer darts and flashlights, theorists. There's a theory on the loose. The first VHS released onto the channel was called Restricted Disappearance 0618-1992.mp4. In this video- Which made me jump out of my skin for the, for the first time in a very long time in terms of me uh, reacting to videos. Last time I jumped out of my skin before I watched this video was the first Backrooms video I ever reacted to. So- Go check that out. We see Huggy escape the facility and run out into the woods with a large group of playtime employees in pursuit. Five end up dead and six remain missing. Seems like Huggy can't be stopped. But then the video ends with an ominous scene of the giant Huggy peacefully standing next to a normal residential house. He's captured and brought back to the facility. In terms of lore, this video does a lot with very little. On the surface, this tape feels very straightforward. Huggy escapes the facility, scares ensue, and then he's brought back. But this short, basic narrative actually goes a long way to confirm many suspicions that we've had about the characters and the events of this franchise. First, this video reinforces the timeline of the Bigger Bodies initiative, Playtime Co.'s push to create giant toys that help around the factory. We know via unlockable cards that are found in Project Playtime that Mommy Longlegs started as a Bigger Body creation before they wound up making toys of her in 1991. So this- Okay, that I did not know. VHS taking place in 1992, Because I have yet to play um, Project Playtime. I refuse to play that game by myself. I'm gonna get try and get some of my friend, other friend, my brother, and our 
run John to try and get that them to play that game with me. ...into that rather nicely. The project is in full swing at this point, and the trap toys are starting to get restless. It also confirms something that we've suspected for a while now, that some of these giant toys were created using orphans in some way. That's why we see Huggy standing outside of a house at the end of the tape. He was just trying to go back home, the home that he was either adopted into or his foster home. His childlike instincts taking him back to the last place that he felt safe. It's this I didn't think about that. sad, somber moment that does a lot to showcase the tragedy of this game's story. And that's not all. This Huggy seems to be acting differently to the one that we met in chapter one. Huggy escapes the what facility, mean? but there's no mention of violence towards the staff. Huggy only seems to become violent to the employees after they shoot at him. This tells me that Huggy, and presumably some of the other experiments like him, aren't naturally violent. It also reinforces what we see in Project Playtime's tutorial. Huggy is largely complacent until the prototype urges Huggy to kill. They are trying to build more toys, more like you. Kill everyone in sight. It really seems like the bigger bodies monsters are the collateral damage in this war between Playtime co-employees and the prototype, Experiment 1006. They're the innocents hmm. that wind up being caught in the middle. This is something that we can start to see more clearly in the next tape, Restricted Relocation 0808-1995.mp4. Which is the mommy, not my mommy long legs, the Kissy Missy video. I need to play. I'm, I'm messaging everybody tonight. I'm messaging everybody tonight. <laughs> in this newest VHS tape, we see Kissy Missy being transported towards play care in August of 1995. The tape mm. repeatedly tells us not to view the footage. I can't. Does this also mean that Kissy Missy is going to return in chapter three? Because that's where he left off the final scene in chapter two. Thoughts? possibly see that plan going wrong in any way. Again, just shows the absolute negligence of this company. So of course, we keep watching, and in true Playtime Co. fashion, things start to go wrong. We travel down the rails with Kissy strapped to the train. As we ride, we pass by graffiti on the wall that reads, The Hour of Joy is at Hand. In oh, I never noticed shots, that. We see text flash on screen meant to be instructions for employees, but then each message winds up getting overridden by capitalized red text that says, basically, to do the opposite. It tells them to release the straps that bind Kissy Missy, which, as you'd expect, means that the employees wind up dead at the side of the tracks. It's another simple, straightforward take. Also, I also just realized, too, the uh, models that they're using that are of the dead uh, co Playtime Company uh, employees are the same ones you saw in the trailer for Project Playtime. It's the same people. That does an incredible job of hiding tons of lore clues in plain sight. Let's just start with oh, the yeah, date, definitely. shall we? Poppy's already done a great job of mapping out a very clear timeline for us. Unlike some other franchises. <laughs> <clears throat> At this point, we know when each toy was made, starting with Poppy in 1950 and ending with Boogie Bot in 1993. And because Mommy Longlegs was a big body before her toy released in 1991, we also know that the giant toys were in development sometime before that. At this point, the only key date that we're really missing is the day that the toys went rogue, destroying the facility in either kidnapping or killing members of the staff, as we hear in the background of this Chapter 1 VHS tape. That's why I'm making this lie. The prototype. Of so that the same mistake uh, won't tape. be made twice. But now, thanks to a combination of- Yeah, because we still don't know exactly where it started, but... Hold on, I'll let Matt Pat talk first. This relocation tape, as well as the developer interview, I think we can tell when it happened. Recently, the developers went on to Discord to answer a bunch of questions that the community had, and one was about the date in which the Playtime Co. factory shut down. Well, I'm sure we all would have loved to have a definitive answer from them. Where's the fun in that? They had to make us work for it. What they did clarify, though, was that the factory did not shut down in the 2000s. This then narrows our window really? to a seven-year period between 1993 and 1999, which, let's say, is a lot more precise than we've had up to this point, but I actually think we can do it one better. Take a listen to the audio that we hear in the background of the restricted relocation tape. You hear those screams in the background? Do they sound familiar? Whether those who are beneath us understand it or not. Those screams? The screams of employees being mauled to death by giant- Did I hear that in the Kissy Missy video? I don't think I heard that. Toys, those are the screams that we can hear in the distance. The event that shut the factory down happened on this date, August 8th, 1995. This is the day of the Great Toy Rampage, and it's all on account of him. Experiment 1006, the prototype. Though still missing, today's events are no doubt in relation to him. He's the one orchestrating this attack on the employees. Not only is he speaking telekinetically to all the toys in the facility, urging them to kill, but he's also the one manipulating these VHS tapes. Altering the text to all caps or using the color red to communicate with us. Getting but how is he altering the tapes if he's not 
look reading them or just rewriting them. I don't know how tape editing works, so I'm just running out a bunch of stuff. Not just the monsters to rebel, but the humans watching the tapes to listen to his commands. Suddenly, that graffiti that we see in the tunnel, the hour of joy is at hand, makes a lot more sense. It feels like something that Experiment 1006 would say, or more specifically, the person that became 1006, Elliot Ludwig. His whole goal was to bring joy to children, and after being betrayed and turned into a monster by Leith Pierre and the Doctor, it makes sense that he would use the same terminology, almost ironically. These toys were made from children to be workhorses. Now, he will finally be be able to free them and give them the joy that he had promised them since the beginning. Except, there was one thing that didn't quite go according to plan. Kissy Missy didn't kill the train staff like she was supposed to. Now, I know y'all probably think that I've lost it. Clearly, those Playtime employees around her feet are dead. Just look at the blood on Kissy, around yeah. her feet, around her hands, around her mouth. This is an open and shut case, right? But to that I say, look again. What do you think these are? Is that not blood splat? I mean, could See, be scratches? 1006 is the only creature that we currently know about in this entire facility that has claws capable of creating marks in the wood like that. He has to have been here during this moment, shredding up the employees once he realized that Kissy wasn't going to be doing it herself. What's more, Kissy Missy huh. is laying on top of the scratches. It means that she was standing aside while the prototype slashed and slaughtered everyone around her, and then resumed her position on the train when he was done, like a good, obedient toy. Truly the best girl. You can even see what appears to be bones or intestines on the floor by her feet, something that would have been eaten if this was any other giant toy. But Kissy refused. She left them there. Yeah. This wasn't an act of hunger like with Huggy killing people. This was 1006 acting out of revenge. Revenge for turning him into a monster, for torturing the kids that he swore to protect, and for locking away the only thing he ultimately cared about, his daughter, Poppy. But I think we can actually keep going here. I think we can actually prove the identity of Kissy Missy. We're rarely given names of actual humans in this franchise, but when we are given a name, they tend to be repeated a lot throughout the chapters to show that they're going to be important to the ongoing narrative. That's yeah. There are still a couple names right now that haven't led to anything substantial. For instance, during chapter two, we can actually find this note. Entire batch of toys is miscolored due to Patty Hall sabotaging the painting machine. Saboteur has since been dealt with. Patty Hall. This was a new character that we'd never heard about before and was Yeah, I was gonna say, I don't yet. remember this that name either. Me as odd. Even one-off characters like Avery, the disgruntled worker from a VHS found in chapter one, gets himself a second VHS in chapter two to flesh him out a bit. But Patty? Yeah, she was just there. A random name on a random rejected toy form. Or or at least that's the way it was until the ARG launched. In case you missed this one, the ARG involved us following the story of a new character, Rowan Stoll, an employee who was slowly figuring out that something wasn't quite right at playtime. And yeah. as a part of that ARG, he released a bunch of internal documents via an FTP server that we could access. And one of those documents on there was this, a disciplinary document for a familiar face, Patty Hall. Quote, details of occurrence, sabotage of retail shipment. This week of 1291, employee intentionally sabotaged factory equipment. In particular, a paint machine. The employee mismatched 57 paint canisters, resulting in an extraordinary amount of toys no longer being suitable for retail. Retail shipment number 018345 was recalled, resulting in a significant amount of lost revenue as well as damaging Playtime Co.'s brand image among several major retailers. There is substantial evidence supporting the assumption that this sabotage was done in some sort of defiance to several of Playtime Co.'s practices. Plan for disciplinary action. Effective immediately. Employee is demoted from toy designer and will be sent downstairs to storage B to receive further instructions. All of this took place on January 2nd, 1991, signed by none other than our good friend and leader of the Bigger Bodies Initiative, the Doctor. The next time we're down in storage B, there are no employees working there. It is literally a storage room for toys that are being experimented on. Notice the blood that covers this smaller Mommy Longlegs doll in the background. Oh, I never saw the that. The only living thing that we see in storage B? Kissy Missy. Could it be that Kissy Missy and Patty Hall are actually one and the same? I know that might feel like a bit of a stretch, but think about what we're seeing here. It's 1991, so the Bigger Bodies Initiative is in full swing. We have yeah. a character in Patty who's openly defiant to those in authority, a chaotic neutral, just like we see with Kissy defying the prototype's rampage. And we have ourselves a character associated with creating alternate colored versions of other toys, just like how Kissy is an alternate colored huggy. Plus, the yeah. biggest clue of all, the fact that we've only seen Storage be mentioned with regards to these two characters 
characters screams a connection. Lastly, it would explain why Kissy Missy is friendly towards us in Chapter 2. Sure, she's against Playtime Co. She has been from the start. She was sabotaging their toys. But I also don't think that she's on the side of 1006. She witnessed the monster kill her fellow employees in cold blood on the train. My gut is that she just wants this whole place to burn. And so when she sees us, a person trapped inside the facility just trying to get out, she sees an opportunity. We are the only ones that can stop not only 1006, but also destroy Playtime Co. from the inside. Have those still alive brought to justice and have the fond legacy of Playtime Co. tarnished and forgotten forever. That is why she helped us. And given the instructional video shows her heading towards the play care, I wouldn't be surprised if we bump into her again in Chapter 3. I wouldn't either. To take on whatever new threat awaits us. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Oh and if boy. you want to keep this poppy train a-rollin', here's a link to our most recent poppy theory over on the left, where we break down the secrets in the game's first season. To yes, that was the last uh, poppy playtime theory video I reacted to. But that actually did raise some interesting pointers, because it, it, I didn't even notice the scratch marks on the board when I first reacted to that video. It's also been well over a month since I reacted to it, and I just now got it out, so I probably missed a bunch of more details than I... Didn't do a much more in-depth look into the background, which I probably should have. Like I do with my um, Ken Pixel ba Backrooms videos, which whenever you upload another video, I will be getting to. Because I am enjoying that analog series. I think it's the first analog series I've ever reacted to on this channel. But I do want to look at more in the future. And so when the next video of Poppy Playtime comes out, or when I can get my uh, brother and friend to play uh, Project Playtime with me... I'll let you guys know in the future. <laughs> but with that being said, guys, hopefully you enjoyed today's reaction video. Please like and subscribe all that stuff, guys. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.